I'm going to show you how to machine a 2D DXF file in EasyMill Express. We will start by labeling our part with dimensions. You can find dimensions under our view menu. We will use Snap to All to assist in selecting the endpoints of geometry. Do the same for our slots. And then finally our counter bores. We will start machining on our 9mm boss. We will use a facing cycle. Tool number one, tool diameter of 10mm, your feed rates, your speed, the depth of cut is 9mm, a step value of 2.5 in Z, a stock allowance of 1mm for a finish pass. Your step over can be specified by a percentage or an actual number. Click your outside boundary and do the same for the inside boundary. Now for our finish pass, contour, tool number one, Comp number is the comp register at the machine. You'll specify the diameter of the tool. Z step will be zero and the finish allowance as well. We can use a lead in and lead out and we automatically calculate that for you based on the tool diameter or you can go into the advanced tab and you can specify your own lead in and lead out. Now for our 5mm boss, the 5mm boss starts at a negative 9mm so that we don't cut air from Z0 down to 14mm. Facing cycle, depth of cut 5mm, we can use a step 2.5 again, and a stock allowance for finish pass. Go to advanced and we start machining at negative 9. Now for our finish pass, contour. A Z step of 0, a finish allowance of 0, lead in and lead out. The lead in and lead out will start where I click. If I click here on the right side of my arc, the curve flows down the entity to the left side. Meaning if I'm standing here and I'm looking towards the end of my entity, I want the cutter diameter to be on the left side of the part. And as you can see, this is where I clicked, you get the lead in and lead out. Now I'm going to do things out of order and intentionally. Let's make our, our grooves. I'm going to choose a contour operation. Tool number two, compensation number two. We'll use a six millimeter tool. Depth of cut is five millimeters. No step, no finish, offset left. So remember how we determine the left side of the part, or the left side of the contour. Lead in and lead out we'll use, but this time we're going to tell it our own lead in and lead out. Okay, we're going to change the surface data to zero. We start machining at Z0. Under our cycle data tab, we're going to change our ramp status. We're going to turn that to off, so we don't get the additional arc move. Our lead in and lead out, we're going to change the length to 5 millimeter and the in and out angle of zero. We'll choose a line in our curve. We'll start at the beginning and click towards the end of the line. Notice we want to be on the left hand side of that line. We will use a rapid move to join the two contours together so we only need one work step. Now we want copies. We can do this by double clicking the work step in the list box, go to advanced, and repetitions. 
we're going to add rotation. We're going to rotate around X and Y zero. The rotation angle is 60 degrees and we're making six copies. Verify. And there's our six copies. An isometric view and 3D preview. Now notice I said we were going to do things out of order. What I really wanted to do is make this bore first and then cut our channels. So I'm going to make a pocket operation out of our bore. We'll use the same tool. The depth is going to be 20 millimeters. And we'll take this and increment 5 millimeter. And we'll change the step value to maybe 30%. Now let's change the order. I want my pocket before my contour. So I highlight my pocket, right mouse click, cut the work step, come into my contour, right mouse click and paste the work step just above it. Verify all, isometric view, 3D preview. Now I get the order that I desired. Now let's pocket our slots. Same tool. The depth of cut is actually going to be 11 millimeters. A step of zero. Stock allowance of zero and a step over 30%. We need to go to advanced, and we need to tell it we're starting at negative 15 millimeters. Let's contour the outside of our part. We'll go back to tool number one, comp one, full diameter of 10 millimeters. The depth is going to be 20 millimeters. Lead in and lead out. Advanced, tell it we're starting at a surface of zero. And verify. Now for our counter bores. We'll use a drill cycle. We have various cycle types. A spot face will feed, dwell, and wrap it out of the hole. A deep hole cycle offers a chip break in which the tool retracts to a rapid plane or a clearance plane. Tapping, chip break, will feed in, offer a peck, but keep the drill inside of the hole. You have a bore, feed in, dwell, feed out, and a bore, feed in, feed out. Tool number three. Tool diameter is going to be 16 millimeter. Depth of cut is going to be six millimeters. Actually, I'm sorry, the depth of cut is going to be our counter bore of three millimeters. And we need to start at negative 14 millimeters. Surface, negative 14. And then if you select the first hole, single click, select the first hole, single click, then select the other holes of the same diameter, and it will go through and it will find all of the holes of the same value. This will save you a ton of time if you have a plate full of holes and you want to machine the same diameter. Now we have our final drilling operation. Tool number four. Tool diameter of 10 millimeters. Depth of cut is going to be six 
advanced millimeters, advanced, negative 14. Now I'm going to show you a trick. 55 millimeters is our length, a drill tip angle of 118 degrees, and I want to calculate the additional depth for the drill tip angle. Hit auto, and it will do that for you. Let's verify all and 3D preview. And our stock size, post, stock setup, automatic, and verify again. This concludes an example of an advanced mill express part.